If you invest in Disney stock, or if you are thinking about investing in Disney stock, this is the video you want to watch. Because I'm going to show you the best way to invest in Disney stock. And even if you're not an investor, if you're a swing trader or a position trader, this information will help you on trading Disney stock. Um, I believe that every stock has its own characteristics, and by investigating individual stock, you will get a better idea of how that stock acts and reacts to certain events. So let's take a look at um, this symbol here. Okay, This is Apple. Um, I did a study on Apple a couple weeks ago to see how Apple stock reacts to Apple events. Now, Apple events could be just some sort of expo. It could be the CEO giving an announcement to release a new product, such as a new iPhone. Any of those events, um, in, in general, statistically, those events actually hurt Apple stock. So what you'll typically see, if you're familiar with candlesticks, is on the day of the event, Apple stock will show a red candlestick. It will fall in price and it will continue doing so for at least five days afterwards up to uh, 30 days afterwards. That's typically how Apple reacts to its own events. Uh, why that's so? Well, you can think about different theories, but that's not the point here. The point is that by understanding how a stock reacts to certain common events can give you good timing as to when to buy or when to sell that stock. So someone actually took my strategy and applied it for Apple and he made $5,000 on the same day. So he's not a trader, he's an investor, but he took this advice into his trading strategy so that he could actually sell the stock, buy it back at a lower price, and he's left with an extra $5,000. So even if you're an investor, this information is useful to you. Now, how does this connect to Disney? Well, we will first look at how people invest in stock uh, in general. And the best way to do it is if you have a single stock you really like and you want to continually put money into that stock, you probably want to go with something called dollar cost averaging. This is one of those few mainstream ideas that actually make sense from a statistical standpoint. Because what happens, if you do the math on this trading strategy, is that you get most of your shares of that stock at a discount. So it allows you to beat out uh, the people who are investing in that stock you know, once per year. So someone might buy a bunch of Disney stock, um, but if you're using dollar cost averaging, you're going to have most of your stock at a discount, at an average price lower than what that other guy paid. That's just how it works out. So how do you use dollar cost averaging? Well, you determine how much you want to invest in that stock within a given time frame, and then you divide it up into different uh, time frames, sub time frames. So here's an example. Let's say you want to invest in Disney, uh, and you want to put in $10,000 this year, what you do is you divide that into 12 different segments, and every month, let's say on the 15th, you put money into Disney, regardless of what the market looks like or regardless of where Disney's at in stock price. Um, so what you're doing here is you're ignoring any information, but you're still beating the investors uh, on average, simply because of this trading strategy. This is an example of a strategy that requires no research, but is superior to the average, uh, brings superior results compared to the average trader. My theory is that this arbitrary choice of when to buy stock is just that. It's, it's arbitrary and therefore it's not very useful. I think by adding a little bit of research to when you should buy a stock can actually beat dollar cost averaging. And this makes sense because if you know when the low points are going to be, if there are events every year and you know that there's going to be enough to where you can make a dollar cost averaging trade out of it, well, you'd find the optimal time to buy. For example, buying Apple using this strategy is as simple as waiting for an event to end and then buying back maybe a week later. Um, so 
you don't even have to sell your stock. You're, it's just telling this strategy is just teaching you the best time to buy, and it's a better strategy than dollar cost averaging if you can find a statistical relationship between an event and the dips in that stock price. So I set out to do this for Disney, and why? Well, because someone asked me to. They said, do Disney and the relation to movies and whatnot events. A little vague, so I made it a little more specific. The study um, is going to be focusing on animated movies put out by Disney and how Disney stock reacts or um, preemptively acts to those movies. So we're looking at how the stock moves before the movie release and after the movie release. And this is actually timely because there's a new movie coming out one month from now called The Good Dinosaur. It's an animated movie. And um, if we have a statistically accurate method of linking the stock price to animated movie releases, this could be a good time to either get in or get out of Disney. It depends on how the study goes. So let's look at the study. The study is basically this. Disney is either going to have a statistically consistent change after its animated movie releases, or it's not. All right. If it doesn't, then this whole study is pointless and you just stick with dollar cost averaging. Well, if that were the case, um, I wouldn't be making this video. So obviously the second hypothesis turned out to be correct. There are certain changes before and after the movie release. Um, the requirements, let me just tell you all the movies I included. I included all the movies from 10 years ago. There were way, way too many movies to include them all. So I went back 10 years, starting with, uh, what is it, Totoro, um, all the way to the most recent release. I don't know what kids are watching these days. But I put all those movies in there, and I took all the um, release dates and the stock price at the release dates, and, uh, you know, before and after the release dates, and started looking at um, whether those stock prices showed patterns after or before the movie releases. Now there is one thing that we should mention and that is um, that this time frame 2005 to 2015 does cover the bear market of 2007 to 2009 and Disney has an extremely high beta value. Beta means how the stock reacts to market changes. So um, because, because Disney's beta is almost two, it almost doubly overreacts to whatever the market does. So if um, the market dips, Disney's going to dip harder. If the market jumps up, Disney typically is going to jump up harder. But that's not the only thing that controls what Disney does as as in terms of its stock price movement. And that's why we're looking at um, what happens after these movie releases. So those are the requirements. I look, put all those into a... Uh, data file, I wrote a program in R, and then I ran a statistical study using that program. So we got some results. Now I wanted to look at two types of results, um, but I wanted to look at uh, five different time points. Okay, We're going to look at one month before the release, that's long-term anticipation, five days before the release, that's short-term anticipation, the day of or after the release, most of these were released on the weekend, so I would often look at the stock price the next day. And then five days after the release and one month after the release, which would be the reactions to the movie and perhaps reactions to box office sales. Here are the results. Um, without showing you all the data and all the math and all that boring stuff, um, you should know that there are significant changes in Disney price one month after a movie release. That's where I found the pattern. Okay, There wasn't much of a pattern around immediately around the releases, but one month out, you could see that Disney stock increases more than it should increase. So there's something called, um, well, I'm not going to get into that, but the idea is it increased more than its expected price. So this gives you an idea of how to play Disney, but um, ignoring bear market data, looking just at uh, all the movies that were outside of the 2007 and to 2009 bear market, we also see a dip one month before the release. Um, that might not hold true overall, but ignoring the bear market data did hold true. So we saw, uh, I guess, negative antici anticipation for the new Disney release, and that negative anticipation actually dissipates 
before the release. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to be a good. Uh, I'm not sure if this is going to be stable across the market as a whole because in the bear market, when we included the bear market data, it didn't uh, this didn't show up as statistically significant. But it's interesting enough because it's it's close to uh, statistically significant in all the data. Anyway, here's a trading strategy. If you're a trader, here's what you want to do. You buy one month before an animated film release, then you sell one month after. If you use this trading strategy, including the bear market, you're going to get 2% uh, ROI per trade. Realize that there are about 18 animated movies released by Disney per year, so that is compounded. Um, you've got a you've got a decent upside, but an even bigger downside. That's during the bear market. Disney dropped a lot because, well, the beta value is huge. You you probably don't want to play Disney during a bear market. Uh, but ignoring the bear market, we see an average of almost 4% per trade. And remember, that's compounded 18 times if you're doing this every release. The upside is much bigger than the downside. All right. Now, let's say you're an investor and you're not looking to trade Disney. Well, all you have to do is just put your buy times one month before the release. All right? And use that fixed price don't divide your capital by months, is which is what a lot of DCA guys do. Divide it by 18. Divide it by movie releases. And then just go to Google Alerts, um, put in Disney movie, and you'll get a email whenever Disney releases, whenever Disney mentions a new movie release. And then you can uh, just correspondingly put in your trade. All right? So you wait for one month before the release, buy Disney, and... What we're doing is we're, we're hopefully getting in on the stock before it shoots up. Um, so that's the idea. If you like to invest in the long term, you're essentially avoiding buying at a high here. You're not really um, trading like the previous strategy. You're avoiding buying at a high. But overall, you would have acquired more stocks um, more cheaply than people using DCA. And remember that this this 4% you get per trade is compounded 18 times per year because you're going to be doing this 18 times if you're uh, if you're if you're making money um, on the two months spread from the the movie re from one month before the movie release to one month after All right so that is the strategy please subscribe for more strategies like this and for stock picks which i put out every week